Goonie Bird, Chapter 2. Goonie Bird adjusted the pink ballet tutu she was wearing over a pair of green stretch pants. Her t-shirt was decorated with polka dots. Her red hair was pulled into two pigtails and held there with blue scrunchies. She pulled carefully on one of her pigtails, rearranging it neatly because the scrunchie was coming loose. She felt her earlobes, which were small and pink and empty. I should have worn the dangling diamond earrings that I got from the print, she told the class. Maybe I'll wear them next week. Diamond earrings? Prints? Miss Pigeon asked. Well, actually, the prince didn't give me the earrings. I got them at the palace, Goonie Bird explained. Why were you at the palace? Well, first I was in jail, and then Goonie Bird interrupted herself. It's a long story. She reached down and tidied her socks. May you come up to the front of the room to begin, she asked the teacher after she had adjusted her clothes. I'd like to be absolutely the center of attention. Miss Pigeon nodded and stepped in aside so that there was room for Goonie Bird to stand in the front of the class. You might as well sit down, Miss Pigeon, Goonie Bird said politely. Take a load off your feet. Miss Pigeon sat down in the chair behind her cluttered desk. She looked at the clock on the wall. We have 15 minutes, she said before arithmetic. Here's a picture of Goonie Bird. Class, Goonie Bird said, you heard Miss Pigeon. We have just 15 minutes. There are many Goonie Bird stories I might tell you, but I only have time for one today. It was a suggestion for a story. Ben's hand shot up. Tell me about how you came from China, he said. Nicholas called, why are you named Goonie Bird? Chelsea was wiggling and wiggling in her seat. The palace, she said. Tell about the jail and the palace and the diamond earrings. Other hands were waving, but Goonie Bird motioned for those children to put their hands down. She looked around the room thinking, this is the title of the story, she said at last, how Goonie Bird got her name. Just like how the leopard got his spots, Barry Peckerman said in a loud whisper. Barry, pay attention, please, Goonie Bird said. I like to have absolutely all eyes on me. Then when the class fell silent and all eyes except those of Felicia Ann, who always looked at the floor were on her, she began. And notice here, the part where she tells the story is in a different font. How Goonie Bird got her name. Once upon a time, eight years ago, a man and a woman named Mr. and Mrs. Green, that's Green with a silent E at the end, discovered that they were expecting a baby girl. The man's name was Gordon Green, his wife was Barbara Green. They decided to name their baby girl with their initials G for Gordon and B for Barbara. They thought of many different names. Gail Beth, said Miss Green. She liked short names. Gwendolyn Belinda, said Mr. Green. He liked long names. They discussed and discussed. They never argued or fought, but they had many discussions. Once in the middle of the night, Miss Green woke up. She had a dream about a name. She nudged Mr. Green until he woke up a little bit. Then she said, Georgina Babette. No, he said, and he went back to sleep. One night, Mr. Green woke up, nudged his wife, and told her that he had a dream. Gaspacho Banana, he said. That was a nightmare you had, his wife said. He agreed, and they both went back to sleep. Finally, because they could not make up their minds about a name, they decided that they would wait until the baby girl was born. Then they would look at the baby, and somehow they would know that her name should be Grace Bridget or Gloria Bonnie or some other name. They waited and waited for the baby's birth. It takes many months, as you know. So this part is in a different font. Goonie Bird paused in the story. She could see that many of the children wanted to wave their hands in the air and say things. Class, she said. Any comments so far? Any questions? You have nine minutes left, Miss Pigeon reminded them before arithmetic. Kiko asked in a small voice, Did he really say gazpacho banana? Yes, he did, Goonie Bird said. I tell only absolutely true stories. Barry Tuckerman stood up beside his desk. I was named a B name for my grandfather. He said, my grandfather's name was Benjamin. That's my name, Ben called out. My grandfather was in college and my grandmother went to jail, Barry added, or he would have gone with her. Trisha raised her hand. My cat's name is Fluffernuffer, she said. Four more minutes, Miss Pigeon announced. Let's let Goonie Bird get back to her story so that we can hear the ending. Did you notice, class, she added, how she uses characters and dialogue. And her story is full of suspense. It's a cliffhanger, isn't it? What a good storyteller Goonie Bird is. Ready? Goonie Bird asked. Ready, shouted the class, all but Felicia Ann, who never shouted. Okay, here comes the ending. And here we go in a different font. Finally, one spring morning, a baby girl was born. She weighed six pounds and 14 ounces. She had red hair. Look, said her mother. She wiggles her head around looking for food when she's hungry. Isn't that cute? It reminds me of something, but I forget what. Her father peered down at the new baby in his wife's arms. He smiled. She has very big feet. Isn't that cute? It reminds me of something, but I forget what. Mr. and Mrs. Green looked at their sweet baby. They thought and thought. It's coming back to me, Mr. Green said at last. Do you remember when we went on that bird watching trip to various islands in the Pacific Ocean and we saw all kinds of marine birds? 
That's it, his wife said. She looks very much like one of those birds, but which one? Let's get our photograph album from that trip, Mr. Green said. Together they turned the pages of the album. Here's a picture of Goony Bird as a baby. Double-crusted cormorant, Mrs. Green said. They looked down at the baby. No, she didn't look like a double-crusted cormorant. Red-necked greeby, Mr. Green suggested. They looked at the baby again. She does have a red neck, Mr. Green said. She does not, said Mrs. Green. It's pink. They turned the pages some more. Suddenly they both said, oh. Very carefully they looked at the photograph. Then they carefully looked at the baby. Big feet, just like our babies. A head that bobs around, said Mrs. Green, just like our babies. That's the one they agreed. They read the label under the photograph. Liaison Ab Albatross, the label said. I don't think a liaison Albatross Green is a very pretty name for a baby girl, Mrs. Green said sadly. It sounds too scientific. I agree, Mr. Green said, but look at the small print. Together, Mr. and Mrs. Green read the words in the small print. Often called Goony Bird. Goony Bird Green, they said. I like the sound of it, Mrs. Green said. And it has a G and a B. It does indeed, said Mr. Green. So they decided to name their new baby girl Goony Bird Green. Then everyone, including the doctor, the midwife, and a cleaning lady, hugged and kissed and did a Viennese waltz together. The end. What a lovely story, Miss Pigeon said. And it gave us a chance to do some scientific research. We'll look up Leah's and Albatross in the encyclopedia. Thank you, Goony Bird. You may take your seat now and we'll turn to our arithmetic. Wait, wait! Beanie's hand was waving in the air. Yes, Beanie, Miss Pigeon asked. What's wrong? I'd like to hear about the diamond earrings in the palace. That's a different story, Goony Bird said. She was walking back to her desk. Tell it, tell it, the children called. Barry Tuckerman jumped up and stood beside his desk. I want to hear how Goony Bird came from China, he said. I came on a flying carpet, Goony Bird said. But that's a different story, too. She adjusted her pink tutu and sat down. Tell it, tell it, the children called. Miss Pigeon laughed. I'm sure Gwynny Bird was just joking about the prince and the palace and the diamond earrings, she said, and the flying carpet, too. Gwynny Bird had already opened her arithmetic book. She looked up in surprise. No, she said. I wasn't joking. I tell only absolutely true stories. Well, said Miss Pigeon, will you tell us another one tomorrow? Of course, Gwynny Bird said.